All right. All right. Welcome back to another plane explain. Um, got three tables of 500 going. Um, and gonna throw bit to 12 here over this queen seven, I believe is a fold. Same over here versus a recreational could consider opening it, but I'm not gonna bother. I've been away for a while and that's because I've been Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I've been um, on vacation, and then when I got back, I was really sick. I'm still a bit sick, but I figured I'd make a video for you guys. I'm gonna be posting almost every day, getting back into poker. I've been, been playing too much. I've been doing okay. I've been playing some tournaments and stuff. Um, yeah. But, um, um, here on this board without a club... I like to, the the equities are really close on this board in the sense that it's very even. You don't have too big of a range advantage. Gonna be checking back a lot when that's the case. Usually people over check raise these boards kind of. So they don't actually Nikolai is a pretty solid reg, so I'm assuming he will find the leading range. I could have been rolling. Um Jerogen currently doesn't work for GG poker, so because GG seems to care about everything aside from banning players. They care about <laughs> Basically everything else. Um, I'm assuming here you're gonna be, we're gonna be calling most of the time here. So we're gonna go with the call. This player does have a tendency to go pretty thin for value, so I wouldn't be surprised if he just value betting anything. I mean, I don't think you can go too thin. I think up air is a pretty fine bet here. And uh, we're gonna find the check, and he might have a three. Oh, looks like we have the best hand. And uh, here, obviously, gonna be folding with the cold four. Um, so yeah, I have to, I have to get used to using the RNG now because, uh, it still works for poker stars. Link is in the description. I'm free from micro stakes or it works on, I think every other site, but yeah. Um, here versus the rack. I'm just going to check it back. And, uh, here that we're going to have to roll 57 is not high enough in theory to play this hand. And these boards, uh, especially, I think especially at this depth, I don't really see the point of betting. I'm going to call obviously with the. Flush draw, plus the fact that we have a made hand already, and we actually beat a good amount of stuff. And uh, hopefully we're good. Yeah, nice hand. Um, eight's gonna be pure opening. I think fives is where it starts mixing. So if anything, I have to be more conscious of, uh, like here, um, stuff like this, like, I'm just gonna one third of the range. You can play a little bit of a limping range here, versus the wreck, or a perceived. And uh, here, I like to play over bet. Actually, it might just be like B20 or B175 here. And 175 is going to be 10.6. So, could be wrong about this spot, but I imagine Queens wants to get after it. Kind of block a little bit of the calling range, but our hand needs a little bit more protection. So, I don't mind going after it. In theory, I'm probably supposed to roll. Um, because obviously pure bet 175 in Queens is not going to be the most desirable thing to do, I think, but yeah. Um, without a hard here, just going to let it go. Sorry about the fact that there's no 1k I was recording yesterday, but the games were just not that good. I think partially of part a part of it is my fault. I don't think I'm recording too good of videos right now. I'm um, due to the break. So I'm just going to keep trying until I get something actually worth putting out. And uh, yeah, looking to just run with it once I get back in form. So yeah, probably probably record a 30 minute video. I'll interrupt and try and put all the solver stuff. I got to study a lot to get back in form. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say for that. Huh. So here he's got King 10 into Ace 5. Good job, good for him. Not much going on. That's the issue with playing four tables sometimes. There's just not much going on. Oh, finally we got something. Oh, it looks like we will have some action. I play 2.3 here. This is the size I like to play from the cutoff. Um, here when they go to 2 point, I got, normally I go to 6.5, but I'll go to 7, and I'm probably supposed to change my frequencies a little. 
I imagine if I'm going to be using the RNG like this, I need to be a little more careful with timing tells. Just because it's pretty obvious if you rolled or didn't roll, I think. <sighs> I'm not aware. Yeah. So here we have, what is this? 6.4 bigs. Oh, it's an under the gun open versus three bed. He goes with the one third of the range. Downswing kind of hard right now, aside from my tournament results, which have been kind of bailing me out. Been doing pretty good in the tournaments. So wait, what, he, he, he leads on the flush? I don't like this specifically because the ace is a spade. Do I think I I do actually think this guy actually has a hand when he takes this line, but actually I don't know. I don't know what I know. Sometimes you think you have an exploit on a player, but you realize they could easily be leveling you the other way. Which is why, like, um when you don't know, like that's the advantage of knowing theory. So we just turn two pair and went with the lead. Pretty crazy. I think it's fine. Ooh. I think it's a bad probably strategy in general, but I think exploitably it performs pretty well. So we flop the nuts. I don't I think at this SPR, I don't mind the check. Is this guy likely to bluff his stack into me? I'm gonna check twice. I think if he has a pair, he might bet. I think if he bets now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to jam. Or maybe I just don't jam the river. First the wreck. Ugh. I don't know. The thing is, I don't think he ever bluffs the card. So I don't expect to get called, but I think if he has a king, there's a chance he checks back. He's scared of the flush. If he has a flush trips or anything like this, he's going to pay me anyway. Um, the question is if when he has a hand like nine, like tens through sevens, I think that like there's a chance he might hero call me. So I'd rather just jam because I really don't expect to get any bluff equity there. I don't really care to defend a checking range. Don't think it's a spot. Like I said, I don't think he's bluffing me, so. Could I have check raise turn? Possibly. Could do either here. I'm gonna go with the small bet. My hand just eats. If I had an, if I had like Queen Jack or something, I'd be more likely to. Whatever, but. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like nothing interesting is happening too much, but hopefully we can get some good hands going. Here with double bad soon. I like to play a big better check with B75 should be fine on this board. Honestly? 98 though. Don't necessarily mind it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a pure check, but I'd imagine with a double bad suit, this is probably pretty likely to be a check, but the five is not the worst card to have. It's also not the worst thing to fold out some better ace X and you are playing a big size. Here, I think when you don't, we don't pick up anything, we're just going to check. I mean, we have some showdown value in the sense he's going to have hands like 10, nine, Jack nine, Jack 10. He's going to have some 3x. He's going to have some potential missed flush draws. He's not supposed to have too much queen x. I say all these bluffs, but I, I don't know. 2x pot. And I think I'm just going to fold. It's a, actually, like, I really don't necessarily believe him, but I think we need a spade. Yeah, we are pretty cap when we check back the turn, so we do have to find some calls, but we're supposed to check back a good amount of flush draws. And it's to be fair, he's 
when people do these huge sizings and it's like, yeah, I'm leveling, I'm, I'm explaining the fact he's capped. I mean, it is true, but it's like, that is true. But at the same time, I mean, it's a huge size, so you don't have to call very often. And he's going to have a lot of value. So if he just chooses to not bluff for that size and only has value, I mean, I don't really need to call too often. I imagine I'm supposed to bet here. I don't mind half pot. We'll just go with half pot. I should have ruled probably. On a nine, I could have considered checking. Here, I imagine we're supposed to go with a huge overbet when he checks. The question is, do we want to overbet this hand? I'm, on a seven, I guess we'll check. Obviously, all in with the kings. Damn, he picks up a lot of equity. I think here we have to check the tens. I think it's just too thin. He's going to have a lot of pairs like 8, 9, 7, 9, etc. Yep, yeah, you're the nuts. Um, here, I don't, I think 11.5 is a pretty good size. Um, I think on the 39, I'll, I'll fold this one. <laughs> A lot of spots so far, and uh, gonna have a lot of stuff to review because, yeah, just looking to try and get a video out for you guys. The quality should get better. I'm, I'm gonna be consistent um, with my studying and uh, my playing. Um, when I've been since I've been sick, I'm playing a lot of games. I'm playing this game called Bellatra or something. <laughs> this um, and hanging out with my girlfriend, obviously. But. <sighs> A stupid, um, like, on an 82, I think we'll call. Imagine it's close. Spots like this, I think, like, the lower. 82, honestly, might not be high enough. Uh, first half bot here, I imagine we're going to be calling most pairs. Um, In theory, I think you probably actually start to fold some stuff like this, but... Yeah, we're going to have a tough time defending on these boards. I do think ace-5 is going to be a main continue from him, like, out of, like, just natural continues. So, I don't necessarily like having the 5. And I think here, we're just going to go with this. To be fair, for what it's worth, I think this is an under-check-raised spot for value. I think people usually like to just continue barreling with their strong hands. There's not too much of an appeal to check-raise. I imagine you can't just pure bet your pairs, because then you're kind of making him not too indifferent between checking. Like, if you're just pure betting all your pocket pairs. Okay, so we're all in here. My opponent has the world. Run it twice. Sure. We boat up on the first. So now our boat outs are even less likely. Nice hand. Um, here, Deuce is just never gonna 3-bet. Um, I don't think our opponent's supposed to range bet without a spade here, though. I think we're just gonna fold. He finds the check. I think you can do a number of things. I'm gonna go with the bet here with the Deuces. Um, because I knew we were gonna turn a set. So. Hand doesn't really mind folding. I think Deuce with the spade honestly might want to check more. I could be wrong about that, though. I'm just, like, spitballing off the top of my head. Thinking about hands like it uh, depends how big of a check raise strategy your opponent is playing. This game broke. Maybe. All right, um, we're back. I just three bet called a four bet with a uh, eight seven suited here. Um, and we flop a seven. Um, uh, I opened a two hundred. I just decided to open t a two hundred. First the half pot, we're gonna call ones here and probably fold. 
I think, like, in theory, it's a snap. I just don't know how likely people are to bluff this spot. We're just going to check now and lose. Yeah, I mean... This is interesting. The double check. I don't mind the bluff, but I'm trying to think like first half Paul, like how much do we really have to call? I don't like the timing tell them giving off. I'm going to be honest. Does he ever like check queen kings? How often is he? I'm just going to check. Good check by me. I don't know what he's doing. I just don't, I just don't think, um, he has enough. He obviously just bingos the river versus moon, but nice hand. Okay. So we're going to close this now that we got the 500 going. I was just trying to think, and I just don't believe that river and like, it's not pocket Kings enough. It's not pocket Jacks enough for me to start bluffing in that spot with that hand. I really just don't like in theory, like I'm getting exploited if, my opponent makes these assumptions about me, but, um, yeah, on the 13, we'll fold this. I'm going to go with the block here. I think he checks back a lot of pairs that are not as good as an ace. So, yeah. Hmm. I need to wear a hat while I record next time. Jeez. I feel like I'm constantly touching my hair. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, th I just think it's like a, a leveling, like, like this guy just doesn't think he's getting called by a work, which doesn't really make sense. I guess he thinks I jam an ace anyway, but I don't know. Good thing I didn't get leveled. I just checked my hand. I mean, it's obviously hard to have bluffs. Basically, banking on having pocket queens is your main value and ace queen. Which I guess is what he was scared of. <sighs> but yeah. Um, I wonder what we're supposed to bluff there, because it's pretty hard to have hands to bluff, so I think I'm probably supposed to bluff the hand I had. Um, I don't think my opponent is 4-betting jacks enough and stuff like this, so I just don't think he has enough folds. When he sizes down here, I'll call the king-queen. Um, I guess I don't know the rex 3-bet. I'll call one once with the... We're, we're still beating a lot of these hands. Ugh, this is so irritating. Could have probably folded. Pre. I don't I think I like continuing on the flop. Even if he has a, a lot of lower pairs, we still have a good amount of equity versus them. Like Jacks, tens, eights. But by the turn, we're going to have enough ace that I don't think we need to keep continuing stuff like this. Especially since we block gloves. Huh. <sighs> Feels like not much happens. That's kind of the issue with four tables, but I know a lot of you guys in the past have said you like it. Here without a heart, I think we're gonna check. I like to play with the big better check strategy. Um, I think you do need to incorporate a small bet, but I don't think this hand, like direct under to the eight. And uh, we're gonna check twice. Without a heart. 
a lot of times you're checking a lot on the flop you're gonna need to check a lot on the turn otherwise you become exploitable which i will be able to find enough checks i believe And here, this is almost pure, I believe. Gonna find the one third here. <laughs> and here, we're supposed to be super polar when we bet. I don't necessarily love the idea of just going crazy with this hand, so I'm just gonna check. And then on the river. I think we're gonna block some hands here. I mean, I guess this guy's kind of a station, so should have been following through and sizing up. I mean, the the flop float is pretty psychotic, not gonna lie. He hits his four outer though. Um, the issue with calling a hand like this in the flop is when you don't have a diamond. Like a lot of people will look at like, oh, I have a king high, but it's like if you don't have a diamond, you can't really turn anything that strong. Um, he's never going to hit two pair or trips without a flush coming in. But, yeah, I mean, that's like the only way we ever play this. If I, if I know he's floating stuff like this, I would just pure barrel. Um, bluff the turn, and you would just be you, would be... you would have a super hard time defending it, even if I didn't even over... Like, drastically over bluff. So I can also go thinner, thinner for value. It's kind of like how, like, when you make mistakes, uh, everything leaks in. On a seven, we're just gonna fold for that reason. My my thought process is, is, I mean, when you have the ten, it's like not the worst, but there's two higher diamonds here, which is actually a good thing. But basically, I was just thinking, like, if I go one seventy five, I'm gonna get flush over flush the law with this hand. So yeah, I don't mind check turn bluff river. But yeah, gonna have to roll here because this hand does three, but sometimes, but just gonna call on this number. Uh, same here, I should roll 35. I'm still gonna do it. If it was low, low, I would have considered. And uh, here we're gonna go with the raise on the flop. Gonna be raising a lot here, I'd imagine. We have a good, uh, good kicker with our five, so. And we have the backdoor flush draw. I don't mind checking this one back. How long have I been recording for? 23 minutes. I'm here, just gonna go big. I think when you have three callers, you have to size up. I don't mind sizing up with the jack 10 here. It's fine. I'm sure maybe you can mix it. Because the UTG open is pretty strong. So if you're getting a little too wide, he's going to be able to defend very easily. This guy's kind of sus, but... Um, here, I don't mind playing a checking strategy. But also a small bet is probably okay with the jacks. You're going to get called by a lot of 10x. And trapping other hands seems more appealing. I think here I like this hand could check flop, but I think in this line it looks more trappy if I just bet half pot and then check. So I think that's the line I'm gonna take. This is gonna be an ace good amount, but or the nuts. And we're just gonna have too much air there in that line to uh fold to a block with jacks. <sighs> And uh, here we're going to go for the check. Probably double check. Pony could have traps. He's going to have sets a good amount. But he might have some, like, bullshits. I don't know. I'm really not liking this love in the spot, to be honest. We're going to check twice and call a river. Jamming ourselves is okay. Get hero called by, like, eights and sevens. Or this. I, sometimes, like, these people are playing. 
And I actually just don't understand what they're doing. Like, I really... Like, there's just no world. Like, I think sometimes people in poker care way more about leveling you and going for crazy, weird, unexpected lines than they do about just actually taking the lines that make the most money. Like, for example, if a king comes off, it's like, he's a genius. No one thinks he would have ace-king, and I bluff into him, and he stacks me, and it's like, oh. But that line is just never gonna make more money. Like... It's just not. Like if he if he had shoved on preflop over me, then you can make a case maybe he's doing some weird stuff. He thinks people behind are over squeezing, but even then it's like like I have to be over squeezing. Like my hand is a squeeze. Like it's just like I don't know. I sometimes think people are just obsessed with looking smart as opposed to actually just taking the lines that make the most money. Because it's really easy to look smart in this game. You just trap you just call aces preflop and check three times and then go all in on the river 20x pot. It's like, oh, look at this genius. I don't know. You can tell I have a bit of resentment to the way some of the shit plays out, but it's just like, what what are we doing? I believe this hand's a defend. I don't think it's a three bet from these positions. It, it is from these two. Like, it's a pretty high frequency, but um, can do both here. I imagine on the ace he's going to reopen a lot, so I'll check twice. And I think when we check, we're going to have to commit to the triple check. If he has a low pair, I don't think he, we're getting too much value anyway. I'm going to time bank here, because if you have a bluff, you're going to have to... I, I think I could find a snap bluff. Like, I could easily just take a four here and just do it. Um, or like a pocket sevens with a, with a spade or something. But um, And it wouldn't take me that long, but I think in order to get credibility with the value, you time bank it. I think it's going to work a little bit better. And it works out great. <coughs> I believe his hand's a call. I think when you check turn here, a lot of your big traps should probably come into checking river because you're really trying to scare him from being in spots like this with his ace X. He, he, he definitely does have to go for value with the ace X on the river, but it's just a big deterrent. Um, I'll take a look at that stuff though. But I think if you don't go crazy on the turn, I think you can also play like a big over bet on the turn or just like a double bet. I think the range runs pretty equal. Like when the ace gets there. I mean, it's obviously a good card for him, but it's not like... like you have a lot of... Um, the nut advantage is pretty close, I guess is what I'm just trying to say. If anything, you might have more than him due to the... Um, fact that he checked back the flop. And even if he's balanced, you still can only be so balanced. I mean, you're supposed to be betting a lot of these hands are profitable bluffs or profitable bets. Um, here I'm just gonna bet. I don't know. I have king high. I can fold the ace high, so it's good enough reason for me. A lot of these other hands probably bet earlier, so it's one of the spots you end up over bluffing pretty easily if you don't make sure you have a big enough checking range. Oh. <sighs> It's kind of weird. You kind of have to go big, but you have a lot of bluffs, so you feel like you're losing, so then you have to go thin. It's kind of like this whole thing. It's like, you can't go smaller. Like, you want to go smaller because you want to value with 10x, but you still have a lot of bluffs. So it's like, I mean, ten, good 10x that play. 10x that plays is definitely a value, but on that river, I imagine. Um, it probably gets murky when you have the ones that don't play. I'm um, here going to be doing either. I think 64 will stick to the flat. I imagine a pawn is just going to range half pot this spot. Theory, I think you have to build a little bit of a checking range, but I kind of know how these players play. For what it's worth, he could have easily just had a hand that wanted to bet half pot. I mean, it's not like he, the range betting half pot there, I don't think it's too bad. Personally, I think you're a little bit overextending yourself. That's a pretty big size. And uh, out of position, it's really easy for me to defend a lot. So then.
But I, I think it's probably okay. It's probably close to fine to just do it with range, not lose too much EV. I'm just gonna call. I think your pseudo king X becomes too a little too good to uh, fold it to a four bet. And here can do either or. I think I'm just gonna barrel twice. I don't think he checks back a king too often here. I think he's gonna hit a lot of queen oaks. We're gonna have a good amount of bluffs. So I'm just gonna go after him. I don't expect him to reopen it. I mean, he does pick up a lot of bluffs, but those bluffs probably call. Like I imagine most gut shots call. So I don't mind it. I mean, in theory there, I'm probably supposed to be rolling, deciding off the RNG and et cetera. But sometimes I just think certain lines make more money. <sighs> but yeah, I was uh, thinking I'm starting to play on ECR. I might have an issue with my account and stuff. I think I'd like, I've never played a hand on there. So um, contacted support and hopefully I can get on there. Um, I imagine here, this one's, okay, under 96, we'll bet it. So we have two seats at play. So we're unblocking the Queen X flush draws, which is a little relevant, but it might be better to bet this actually for that reason. Cause if we're going to be checking turn, it's, it's a little safer to check turn with this hand compared to a Queen of Diamonds hand. Um, we'll go with that, but. I just think uh, this board has a lot of continues, so I don't mind it. Like, it's, it's not the type of board where you would just have to chop top set. And then here, we obviously just find the check. Kind of, if our opponent has a draw, we want him to get there, etc. Obviously, never. We're blocking a lot of the, the, the middle in calling range. By that, I mean. And uh, here, we're going to block. And uh, yeah, it's a good card to block. Good check. We have jacks nines, obviously. That, don't mind checking. So you want to build a bit of a checking range. I, I'll see where roll. Um, this is a little bit of an aggressive number, so I don't mind the block. Um, the thing is, you want to get value from the ace x, but there's a chance he checks back an ace. I'll just go with the block. I think he might. I mean, if we have a hand like like we want to, I think it's also more important we defend our blocking range than our checking range here. We're gonna have a lot of ace x that wants the value bet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a really profitable spot to bluff here because people don't really want to call. Um, ace king, ace jack, ace nine, all these like ran. All, you're gonna have a lot of one pair ace x here. Um, especially uh, people perceive that I might be over betting. Not me specifically, but like like if I have ace seven of diamonds here, like or not ace seven, ace seven of clubs here. Like I'm not necessarily <laughs> betting half pot on the flop. Um. But people might think that I have a shit ton of more ace x than I do as played. So we go for the block and we get the spear. Whereas if we checked it, I don't know if that happens. So. Yeah, and, I, and what I was trying to say there, I, I think in general, I'd rather defend. I think I think the blocking range gets attacked way more aggressively than the checking range there. Um, in the sense, you're gonna have a lot of middling hands from your opponent. He's gonna be really weighted towards pairs that have to turn into a bluff. And when you check, a lot of those times those pairs don't mind. But when I block, he just knows he's never calling now. So it's just, if, am I gonna bluff or not? And I think it's more likely he turns a pair into a bluff that way. So yeah, I'd rather defend the blocking range because also for what it's worth, like I'm going to be obviously value betting a lot of ace, king, ace, jack, ace, nine, and I'm going to have to call some of it, so. <sighs> All right, welcome back to the only review of the video. Um, yeah, sorry if you guys like to see more reviews, but yeah, I was wrong on my assumption on the flop here. I think I thought I was in the big blind. Um, I'm not sure if the big blind does play half pot. I'm going to have to take a look at it after this, but yeah. Um, queens uh, betting more often than not, unless you have, it looks like, um, the non-blocked door, back door and the club, which I guess is like the least relevant. Um, anyway, onto the turn here. Opponent can play a small raising range on the flop. We are obviously pre-checking queens now on the turn when we have the board locked up and we block a lot of the calling range. Um, here he's supposed to bet some to nine sometimes. Actually, the combo he has, um, sets up pretty well. And here on the river, if you look at it, sorry, this is blocking my view. Um, if you look at it, we're playing some all in and we're playing B33, not much in between. I guess the way I um, set it up, I think I'd actually just play a B20 to B50. But if you play a B75, you actually want to play jams. I realize here I'm not finding enough jams. But anyway, we elect for the block here. Um, our combo is like pretty much never blocking, I believe. But if you look here, what villain's response is. Um, opponent here made a, like a minus like 4.6 big blind jam um, versus the block. 
Um, who knows what else potential gems you'd find? Because the main value he's hand he's going to have here are going to be um, King Jack and Ace Queen. Those are basically going to be the two main hands he's repping when he jams and pocket queens. Um, just simply due to how often those hands are going to be checking back the flop. I mean, checking back the turn where there's a lot of his other value, like 8x is supposed to be basically pure betting on this web of a board. There's just too many action killers. It's actually just not profitable for these hands to check back. If you look at the EV, it's losing almost a big blind for trying to be tricky and cute, which is kind of what I said earlier. Um, simply due to like sometimes you can play a hand in a certain way, but it's just strictly not a profitable way to uh, play your hand. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, so here we go for the block and opponent manages to find this gem. And if we are to node lock, let's just say he we will give him some credit. We'll actually no, we'll, ju we'll just put it in. Let's just say he's jamming these hands pure because he has a certain read versus the block. Um, maybe, yeah. For what it's worth, I don't think he's necessarily 100% check backing, check, uh, betting his ADEX on the turn because a lot of people are not. They like getting tricky. People like getting tricky in poker. So, yeah. And now you can see here when he's pure jamming, it's just too profitable not to block these types of hands. Basically, all of our nutty hands uh, are now blocking. And yeah, uh, just simply due to the fact of how much EV he's dropping <laughs> in these lines if he's jamming. Obviously, I'm not saying my opponent was doing that. Like just because he jammed 10 nine of diamonds, obviously we can give him some credit. It's like maybe a 10 eight blocker. It blocks, I don't know. Yeah, blocks 10 eight of diamonds. And he has the blocks nine eight of diamonds if he thinks I'm checking them nine eight on the turn, so. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, watching this review. It just goes to show that, um, sometimes with the solver, um, if you have an exploit, um, that you actually think will work, um, it's worth committing to it because it's usually, um, it's usually worth it. But what a lot of people do is don't fall into the trap of overly exploiting in the sense that you're kind of just get to a point where you're just guessing every hand because yeah, if I know he's jamming those hands, my line's making money, but what if I don't know he's jamming those hands that I'm just assuming that he's doing that? Like, I don't know. I think it's good to have that mix and good to know. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. What happened here? Because checking trapping, it's like, just, uh, I just don't think it uh, works as well as the block there. Okay, so I won third this flop, which I don't think is a thing. He calls. Seeing just the call, I just feel like he's weighted ace high a lot here. Am I wrong sometimes? Yeah. That's my read. I think he's raising a lot of his trips there. Probably too much. I mean, it's a spot where you want to raise trips a shit ton, so it's not the worst, but. It's my read. All right, been recording for 34 minutes, so I'm going to finish this video. I think this video is okay. Um, yeah. Um, in theory, it's supposed to check range here, I believe. Um, he's gonna have more fours and deuces than you. Uh, not to mention, I don't mind. I mean, you can probably value that somebody's high here. He has to continue worse. But check calling it's pretty fine as well. I mean, I would say ace king out of all the ace x, it doesn't mind betting, but if we're playing a range check strategy, um, here I think we don't want to lead. I don't think we have enough six fours and fives. Feel like I feel like if you lead here, you're just repping a hand like this, which it's like why? Like if you're leading, you need to have the nuts. Like I got him out because what? So we're leading sevens and eights. We're leading high equity hands, but we're not leading the nuts. So it just becomes pretty easy to play verse on this turn, though. Definitely gonna be attacking him. Probably could size up to half. I imagine this is just too good of a price for these double overhands, assuming that they're sometimes ahead. I could. And then on this river, we're just going to find the check. I don't think the spot's very bluffed. Yeah. Like here, I look like, oh, I'm a genius because the river was a not a, like this, what I was saying. Like here, I'm a genius because I bet small. He called his queen. And uh, I win because he doesn't hit an ace or a queen. But in reality, like maybe I need to look at myself and say like, okay, I bet too small of a size. 
he's getting priced in with all these overhands that I know he has. Like I should be making those hands put put those hands in a worse spot. Like just because I won the run out this time, I don't know if that makes sense. Like sometimes you can play in a way where it's gonna look like you're smart because maybe he folds that bot and I extract more value. But what if it's called profitable? What if I go run it and that's? I mean, I'm not saying one third isn't the size there, but I'm saying you. Sometimes people like I, I try not to focus on playing too cute in a way, unless I think that there's like a big edge to be gained, uh, like the certain opponent might level himself too much, etc. Which maybe this guy's the read on me, but yeah, I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but I guess uh, people like in poker, there's a number of different ways to be result based outside of just winning or losing. Um, I guess like that is the main way. But. And uh, here we're just gonna check. I probably overcheck the spot just because I think it's a spot that gets attacked pretty aggressively. Seven's a pretty decent unblocker. I don't think he bluffs too many sevens. Ace of diamonds is all right. And they don't like block like 10 seven, right? Because it's not a thing. Ace 10. I mean, like, we do have a good amount of calls here. I mean, in theory, I imagine this one's supposed to call. I'm trying to think. We block, a, like, the, having the diamonds is pretty nice. We block a lot of the two pairs. The question that I'm trying to think about is how often on the flop is he betting hands like queen jack, king jack, and then turning them into bluffs. Because that's what matters. The ace is a pretty good unblocker. I guess we'll call. Yeah, he has the low. Nice hand. Kind of thought my opponent might be a little under bluffing in the spot. Um, did, just because he had at that time, does that mean he's under bluffing? No. I was just thinking a lot of his bluffs are going to contain hands like ace king. I'm not ace king. A king. A queen. A jack. And we don't have any of those cards. And you need to call some stuff. Um, also an ace blocks like a lot of his value, like he's gonna have a lot of ace 10, he obviously had ace 5, like you could have ace 5 of diamonds as played. So yeah. We elected to go for the call to keep him honest. Um, this guy is not, he's a pretty decent player, so I'll keep him honest. And uh, yeah. Obviously I don't like uh, paying people off sometimes if I think they're less likely to be bluffing in certain spots, but this spot, I mean, we check 8-7 deuce. We're pretty weighted to a lot of base high by the river. I mean, if he's just, if we're folding everything but a straight, I mean, he's kind of running us over, right? And I, I thought the 7 of diamonds was good in case he's value betting 2 pair, which I think he should be on this river. Potentially, he could be. This guy likes to go thin for value, so we're blocking um, hands like... Um, seven, six, that it might check. I don't think the two bear is not too relevant with this specific combo. Okay. Here without a heart, are we more or less likely to bet? Should have rolled, but 82, I would have bet it. Ace is obviously more likely to check. Um, not only do you block more of the calling range, um, you also have more protection. Um, Kings are still pretty up there. Anyway, um, I have no hands up, so I'm going to be wrapping up the recording. Um, thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the little mishap in the middle there, but I hope the video turned out pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, let's stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one.